In this video, we'll take a look at the features, settings, and options of the user interface of Sunstone Engineering's newest welder, the Orion 200i2. Unlike the other Orion series welders, the Orion 200i2, or i2 for short, features an all-in-one welding device encased within the unit on its articulating swing arm. This revolutionary design means a minimized footprint in your work area. Now having a welder doesn't mean sacrificing bench space. This is just one example of the many features available on the i2 that were designed to make welding easier for everyone. Here at the front of the unit is a touchscreen interface. This is the control center of the i2. Let's take a closer look. This is the header area. Here you'll see four tabs, the save and load icons, and the settings icon. The save icon allows users to create a custom profile based on the values shown on the i2's display. Users can create up to 30 custom profiles. The load icon allows users to select those pre-saved custom profiles and use them again with the touch of one button. The settings icon opens a window to adjust several system settings, including audio and visual signals, layout options, and system storage. Each of these four tabs has features and settings specific to each view. We won't review these now, but you can get a detailed description of each by watching tab-specific videos that are available where you found this video. The next section below the header is the waveform graph. In this area, the user has a full preview of the current weld settings and can see exactly what will take place during each weld. The waveform displayed will change based on the control settings the user selects. We'll look at this in greater detail later on in this video. Along the left side of the graph, the numbered scale changes as the weld energy is increased or decreased. You'll also notice that the time of the weld is represented by the length measurement shown at the bottom of the graph. These settings show what's happening during the weld. We'll discuss this in greater detail a little later in this video. In the upper right hand corner, an approximation of the weld spot size is shown based on the current settings. This helps the users have a visible reference when setting power and other parameters. Lastly, in the lower right portion of this section, all the currently enabled functions along with the individual settings are listed. Again, this section lists all the welder's real-time information in one location, giving the user an overall view of all the current welding settings. The next section contains the different controls to customize the I2 settings for welding output. First up is the power control. This circular dial controls and selects the amount of weld energy used. Users can touch or slide along the circular path to adjust and set the weld energy. Notice that the dial's controls are non-linear. This allows users greater refinement and control when selecting lower level settings. This means when welding with the classic waveform, the first 25% of the dial represents 0.01 to 3 joules. The next 25% represents 3.01 to 17.5 joules. The third 25% represents 17.6 to 86 joules. And the final 25% represents 86 to 200 joules. Additionally, users can input the weld energy settings via a number pad. To access the number pad, tap on the weld energy number inside the dial. This allows users to directly enter the exact desired weld energy values. Once the numeric value is entered, tap OK to set the value and exit the number pad. Whether using the power control dial for speed or the number pad for accuracy, the i2 lets you choose how those values are entered. Next to the power control are three sections, waveform, ignition, and agitation. These sections access and control advanced settings that let the user completely customize how the I2 performs. First, let's look at the waveform section settings. The waveform selections determine and control how energy is released when welds are made. Let's look at each of the three waveform options. The classic waveform is the default waveform for welding on all Orion welders. It has a high peak current, which is the peak of the energy level, followed by a curved discharge slope. The curved discharge slope allows the weld spot to cool with less internal stress and without surface ripples. Classic welds typically have a smoother surface than other waveforms. The triangle waveform is a new option available only to the I2. The triangle waveform is similar to the classic waveform ability to make smooth and uniform weld results. One key advantage of the triangle waveform is the ability to set the peak and the length independently. 
meaning a weld could have a very high peak and a very short time, or a very low peak with a very long time, or any other combination of these two parameters. A triangle waveform's weld power will always go to zero. In comparison, adjusting the weld time in classic waveform to be shorter does not guarantee that the weld energy discharges to zero. Instead, the energy is simply cut off and not allowed to fully discharge. The square waveform, like the triangle, is also a new option available only to the I2. This new waveform has some rather unique and helpful characteristics. Similar to the triangle waveform, a square waveform allows users to adjust the peak and length independently. Again, the user can select square waveform so that the weld could have a high peak and a very short time, or a very low peak with a very long time, or any other combination of these two parameters. The difference of this waveform compared to the classic and triangle is the abruptness of power at the start and end of each weld. The square waveform closely mimics the weld output of a typical laser welder. For more detailed information about these three waveforms, be sure to watch the waveform video. The next section is ignition. The ignition options control the electrode tip's position at the moment the energy is released. In the standard ignition option, the energy discharge occurs at approximately the same time as the tip lifts off the workpiece surface. Since the electrode is close to the workpiece when the weld is formed, it's easier to get a weld on any surface or angle. This mode provides the most accuracy, but requires the operator to hold the workpiece steadily below the electrode. This mode is perfect for metal types that do not require a preheat phase during the weld. Because the electrode is closer to the workpiece, it may become dull more quickly. In the standard plus ignition, the energy discharge happens well after the electrode tip lifts off the workpiece surface. While similar to the standard option, standard plus includes a preheat function before the main weld. During this time, a very low amount of energy flows through the electrode and workpiece. This preheating of the tungsten electrode helps create a more efficient weld area in preparation for the main weld. The standard plus ignition helps provide better weld consistency by allowing more variation in contact pressure before the weld takes place. Make sure to watch the video on ignition modes for more details and in-depth explanation. The next section is agitation. During the weld, a high-frequency agitation feature can be used to improve weld formation and strength. Additional energy is added to the weld in the form of micro-energy bursts. These energy bursts occur at the rate of up to 600 times per second. Take precaution that using agitation can produce an audible high-pitched ping noise. The first option of agitation is none. With none selected, no agitation is added to the weld. This is the standard weld discharge curve with a smooth slope. The sloped agitation option offers low levels of agitation. It has minimal impact on spot size formation and accuracy, but yields additional penetration and enhanced weld strength. The sustained option offers high levels of agitation for improved weld spot strength in some metals. The high levels of agitation energy will affect the spot size because the extra energy used in this option. To compensate for this addition of agitation energy, it is recommended to lower the overall weld energy slightly when using this option. The next control is the slide adjustment labeled length. Length adjusts the amount of time that the energy is discharged from the welder. By default, the length will automatically adjust and change as the user adjusts the power dial. Increasing or decreasing length allows for more or less total weld energy and changes the size and penetration of the weld spots. The options section contains three icons. They are play pause, undo, and reset. Pressing the play pause icon toggles between play and pause. If the play icon is green, the welder is capable of making welds any time contact is made with a grounded workpiece and the electrode. When paused, users can make adjustments to any settings but are unable to weld until the play pause button is pressed and showing green. The undo icon allows the user to go back through the previous five screen taps. This is helpful when a change is accidentally made. Finally, the reset icon resets all the variables and parameters on the screen back to the factory default settings. Next are the trigger options. They include touch detect and foot pedal. In touch detect, the welder will initiate the weld process any time that a grounded workpiece makes contact with the electrode. 
when foot pedal is selected, the welder will only initiate a weld on a grounded workpiece when the foot pedal is pressed. The I2 has three options to choose from to control how fast the welds occur. In single fire mode, the I2 welder will go through the following steps each time a weld is initiated. First, the argon gas will preflow. Second, the weld energy will be released. Third, the shutter will close. Fourth, the electrode will retract. Fifth, the arc will form. Sixth, a weld will be made. Seventh, the energy will turn off. Eighth, the shutter will open. Nine, the tip will return. And ten, the gas will turn off. Making a second weld will repeat this entire process. In rapid fire mode, the welder is able to speed up the weld rate by eliminating some of the steps mentioned in the single fire mode. Primarily, the gas will stay on for as long as a subsequent weld is initiated. The electrode is able to retract, make a weld, and return, and if it makes contact with the workpiece, it immediately retracts again to make another weld. Rapid fire makes it possible to have between 1 and 5 welds per second. A slide bar will appear above the rapid fire button, allowing users to select the weld speed. The last option is seam mode. This new revolutionary feature was created by the Sunstone engineering team and is only available exclusively on the i2. Seam mode operates like a combination of a pulse arc welder and a micro TIG welder. Once a weld has been initiated, the electrode retracts and produces a small pilot arc that will stay lit during the entire seam welding process. While the pilot arc remains lit, individual weld pulses are overlaid at speeds of up to 30 welds per second. Yes, you heard that right, 30 welds per second. This mode allows for continuous seam welds and is effective on surfaces and metals that are prone to hot cracking. For best results, users will need to maintain a close, consistent distance between the workpiece and the electrode. Please note that in this mode, the workpiece will become hot. A leather glove is highly recommended to prevent finger burns from hot parts. Now that we've reviewed the entire user interface, you're ready to start using the i2.